Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video. And before we get started, I just wanted to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. Today, what we're going to be doing is breaking down my overall thoughts on the 2019 season and why at seven and nine, even though it was close to my original prediction, I thought the Jets would go eight and eight this year. It was a disappointing season. So the Jets went seven and nine. Like I said, one game off from my eight and eight prediction. I think most people thought this was a seven, eight, nine win team. Maybe the most optimistic said maybe they go 10 and six and sneak into a playoff spot. Well, a lot of things went wrong, starting with injuries and mono in week one. But there was also some things on the coaching staff that had issues. And we're going to break down the numbers. That's what we're going to do in this. So like I mentioned, seven and nine, when you start one and seven and go to seven and nine, you have to give credit to the coaching staff. But who are you giving credit to specifically? It's Greg Williams. The defense is the pure reason why they were seven and nine. If they had even just a mediocre defense, this is a four win team. I predicted that they would go three and three in the division. They did not. They went two and four. They beat Miami once and they beat Buffalo once. They got swept by New England and they went two and four. The last time they were over three and three in the division, 2010. They did it once this decade. I also, one of my last predictions was I thought the offense was going to be way better than the defense. And when you looked at the defensive side of the ball, they had no edge rusher. Tremaine Johnson and Dow Roberts were starting outside corners and they didn't have a whole lot of depth on in the secondary. I thought this was going to be a bad unit, and boy, was I wrong. It was the exact opposite. The defense was great all year, and the offense was atrocious. So let's break down the numbers. We'll start with DVOA, one of my favorite ones. Their overall DVOA was 26th. Offense was 31st. It finally, it took to week 17, but they went up from 32 to 31. Pittsburgh fell beneath them in offensive DVOA. And then defensive DVOA, they finished in 10th. So they're a top 10 defensive unit. We know how good they were special teams. That was also phenomenal. So in terms of DVOA, overall 26th. Offense, bottom of the league at 31. And then defense, you're a top 10 unit. Some offensive numbers to give you some context to why I'm so hard on Adam Gase and Dowell Loggins, his crony who just throws the challenge flag and does nothing else. They were 31st in the league in points four. They were 32nd in the league in yards. Passing yards, 29th. Passing touchdowns, 27th. And they were 31st in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. This is as bad of an offense as you could possibly get. I understand their offensive line was really, really bad this year. I understand that Sam Darnold missed three games this year. But there is still no excuse in 2019, in today's NFL, to be that bad offensively is almost impossible to do. In, in 2019, now 2020, in the NFL, it's so easy for offenses to put up points and put up big numbers. In nine of the Jets' 16 games, so more often than not, the New York Jets scored one touchdown or less. Nine times. When you're looking at the Jets' offense in 2019... It was an utter disaster. It really was. And Sam Darnold was okay this year. He didn't take a massive regression. Yes, there was two really bad weeks in a row against New England and against Jacksonville. But other than that, he was pretty solid. He wasn't phenomenal. Sure, he flashed. There was a really nice run against teams like the Raiders, the Redskins, the Giants. He put up some really good numbers, Sam Darnold did. But overall, he had a improved season in his second year, which is what we were expecting, but he didn't take that huge step in year two like some Jets fans were hoping for and like what I thought he was going to. On the defensive side of the ball, they were much better. They were 16th in points allowed, and they were 7th in terms of yards against. They were 17th in passing yards and passing touchdowns against. I mean, that's a little bit understandable when you look at the Jets' secondary and what they were working with. I mean, Tremaine Johnson, when he was healthy, stunk. Dow Roberts, when he was healthy, stunk. Brian Poole was really good as your slot corner. Bless Austin came on strong. Arthur Mollette came on strong. Even Nate Harrison had a couple of good weeks. But they didn't really have that good of a secondary. And their leading sacker was Jordan Jenkins with eight sacks. He's more of an edge setter. He's a pretty good outside linebacker. He's not someone who's going to get after the quarterback like crazy. But he's just he's a solid depth piece. And when he's leading your team in sacks, you know you probably have a little bit of an issue. But despite their flaws, they were still a really productive unit. 
Against the run is where they really thrive, though. Second in the league in rushing yards allowed and ninth in terms of rushing touchdowns allowed. They really swallowed up the run, and that was put on display mostly against the New York Giants when they held Saquon Barkley to one yard. Thank you so much, Dave Gettleman, once again. Against teams with winning records, the Jets had a 1-5 and five record. 1-5 and five against teams above 500. That's awful. And their one win came in week 17 when the Buffalo Bills were resting their starters. So that's a cheap win, too. They couldn't beat any good team. So yes, they were almost a 500 team at 7-9, and nine, but they did not do well against good teams, against quality opponents. All, you know, in the, the six games they played where they went 1-5, and five, those are all playoff teams. And the Jets could not hold their own. In the first game, they probably should have beat Buffalo with their starters, but they didn't. They melted down, and in Week 17, they barely scraped out a win. And I mean barely scraped out a win. Against the AFC Conference, they were bad. They went 4-8. and eight. Not good enough. You have to be better in your conference. I mean, you can't play the NFC East every year. That's part of the reason why I was so upset with the Jets, because they had an easier schedule. You're playing the NFC East, arguably the worst division in football. Sorry. And on top of that, the furthest you had to travel to was Cincinnati, Ohio. You barely moved. It was all on the East Coast. Not a bad travel schedule at all. Next year, you got to play the NFC West and the AFC West. So you have a very tough schedule. And it's not like the Jets beat up on bottom feeder teams either. They really struggled against the bottom 10 teams in the league. They were 3-4 and four against the bottom feeder teams. They were 3-4 and four against teams who are picking in the top 10 of the draft this year. This is That's just bad. And on top of that, they are the only team in NFL history, 100 years the league's been around, they are the only team to lose to two 0-7 or worse teams. They lost to the Dolphins, and they lost to the winless Cincinnati Bengals in embarrassing fashion. Those two games, if you flip those around, just those two, and on top of that, you hold on to a 16-point lead in Buffalo, you're looking at a 10-6 season, and the narrative is completely different. But that's not what happened. The Jets blew a big lead on their first game of the year. They then had their quarterback go down with mono for three games. They completely regressed. I mean, you look at what Mike Tomlin was able to do with the Steelers and how they were able to keep that thing afloat. I understand they're a much better organization than what the Jets are, but how the Jets just were in competent with anyone other than Sam Darnold playing the quarterback position is a little bit scary and definitely an indictment on Adam Gase. And then on top of that, even when Darnold comes back and is healthy, yeah, he put up some good games like against Dallas and against the Redskins and Giants and Raiders. I understand that. But if you look at all the numbers, offensively, they didn't do all that much at all all year long. Like I said, in nine of their 16 games, they scored one touchdown or less. Offense has to be better in 2020. If you want to be anything above a 7-9 and nine team, you have to have a better offense. Because if this defense takes a step back, then they're really in trouble. Because, if, like I said, if this isn't a top 10 defensive unit in DVOA, if they're like in the 15-20 to 20 range, this is a 5-11 and 11 football team with this offense. Now, if Sam Darnold takes a step, Adam Gase takes his head out of his rear end, and they somehow figure out how to scheme a football game, use Le'Veon Bell, bring back Robbie Anderson, use Chris Herndon, maybe, I mean, like, why didn't Ty Montgomery get used this year? I, I have so many questions, and 2019 was just such a weird year, and sometimes in a loss season, when you go 7-9, and nine, or you go 8-8, eight and eight, or you don't make the playoffs, you could take positive strides. You could look and say, wow, our 22-year-old quarterback really grew, and they played really well down the stretch. But that's not what happened. They were a 5-9 and nine team who beat two really banged-up teams with scoring one offensive touchdown against the Steelers and one against the Buffalo Bills, and now you're picking 11th in the draft. And I'm not even saying like I'm a, a pr necessarily a pro-tanking person, but... It's just really frustrating from one thing to the other that Adam Gase is getting praised now because he went 6-2 and two in the second half when his offense was atrocious. It was Greg Williams' defense that carried this New York Jets team to seven wins. They had no business winning seven games after that 1-7 and seven start, but they did, and now Adam Gase is getting praise for it, which is crazy to me. But nonetheless, happy to say the 2019 season is over. Make sure to stay tuned on the channel, though. A ton of Jets content coming for you this offseason. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary. I'll talk to you next time.